So yeah, first off, let's talk a little bit about Tropho. So what drew you to, to the project? Right. So uh, I started a production company called Renegade in 2019, right before the world went to hell in a handbasket. And, and one of the first things that came across our desk was this book by Candace Fox, an Australian mystery writer. Uh, really good. I, I, we were happy to be turned on to her. She's got quite a following in Australia and not too many people have uh, heard about her here, but by way of endorsement, I know that she co-wrote, co-writes some books with James Patterson. Yeah. So she's got, uh, you know, if Patterson likes her, then she's got to be good. She is. She wrote this terrific novel called Crimson Lake. It's a detective mystery thing. The exciting thing about it is the characters, you know, I mean, good mysteries are, uh, I'd say, pretty tough to write. But great mysteries are when you're able to combine the character aspects with the actual mysterious type stuff. Right. Yeah. And these two characters are some of the strongest that I've read in a while. You know, they're they're polar opposites. I play Ted Concafe. He's a disgraced cop. He's been accused of a terrible crime. And so he loses his marriage and his job and he fucks off to uh, Queensland, which is the yeah. northernmost Australia that you can get. And that's our south. Right. So the hot, the, the higher you go in Australia, the hotter it gets. Um, and hence the name of our show, Tropo. It means literally being driven crazy by the tropical heat. <laughs> so uh, what was it like filming in Australia? Did you ever go Tropo? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're halfway. I was halfway around the world, and so yeah. you can't just jet home on a weekend. You know, it's uh, it's a commitment. And I was over there for months. Um, fortunately, we had a good group of people with us, talented bunch, and the work was good. But it left me um, pining for home. I got to tell yeah. you. As much as I like it, you know, it, it, and it, it's a little bit like visiting uh, the closest we would have here is sort of southern Florida. Hmm. You go down to the southern tip of Florida with the crocodiles and the alligators and the snakes and the spiders the size of your fist. I mean, they, they've got everything, but it's sort of twice the size over there. It's pretty yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, but I was saying, so Ted Concafe is this, he's ready to die. He wants to kill himself because he's got people camped out on his lawn down home and he goes up there to disappear and, and he ends winds up in this funky uh backwater sort of town way up there where people really do go to disappear i mean i've been up there and it's a it's a strange part of the you get you meet some interesting characters up there who really do want to disappear for all kinds of various reasons um people on the run you know, uh, people that just don't want to be found. <laughs> yeah. And, and you run into them up there. And some of them really do go tropo. Um, and uh, and he meets this girl who's also crazy, uh, Amanda. So yeah. the show is these two people. There's Ted and Amanda. Amanda's a 20-something shaved head tattooed girl who spent 10 years in prison for killing her best friend. Great. So they just make a hell of a couple, you know, or, or a combination. And yeah. And, and she's so, played by uh, Nicole Shamoon. Right? Yeah, she's terrific. Yeah. yeah. So how, how did you guys find Nicole? What was that I process? Was in, like? Western in uh, Montana. Yeah. And of course, everything's done remotely anyway, but uh, she was in Australia. I was in Montana. And we did our chemistry reads over Zoom like we're doing now. Yeah. I thought this is never going to work. you know. And they brought in several actresses to audition with me uh, one day and just knocked them out. And then I said to the guys, I was like, this, we can't do this. This isn't working over Zoom anyway. And then Nicole walked in, changed everything and yeah. proved, proved to us that, yes, you can do chemistry reads over Zoom. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, we kind of knew instantly that she was the girl. I, I, the, the, it's a tough part to play. It's very specific. And she's a dynamic hell of a character. And if we don't find the right girl, we didn't have a show. And yeah. uh, 
we kind of knew that we were like, well, if we, if we walk away from this without the girl, then we also have to walk away from the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Oh, that's, and the, the show, I mean, I, I was, I was looking up before cause it's coming out. I think it's May 20th, right? If I, I think it is I'm May 20th. Yeah, so in Australia, I think you can get it on a on a channel called Freevee. But um, can you talk a little bit about where you can watch it that's, in like the US? That's here. That's that's where you get oh, so it. That's in, yeah, that's it's in the Amazon. US. Yeah. It's Amazon. Okay, it's awesome. Amazon. You go to Amazon, and you know they change their IMDb app to uh, call be called yeah. Freevee. So we're kind of launching that uh, that new rebrand or whatever it is. So yeah. you go to Amazon, there'll be a banner. Um, I just tell people it's on Amazon. That's where you go. Okay, cool, awesome. Because um, I've, I was like, just I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of yours ever since watching you in The Punisher. Um, oh, that nice. was, that was. So I, I, I get this feeling that you like to play characters in law enforcement that might have a bit of an issue with law enforcement. Is that, is that something? Is there That's something funny. about that type of character? I, I suppose there is, you know, people who are in law enforcement but have a problem with authority. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that that's seems it. to be a, a trend. <laughs> that uh, and I did this movie called Crown Vic, which went to jail yes. back there a couple years ago. A similar uh, character in that in that way. They're different characters, but they all if they shared one thing, and nobody's ever pointed that out. I, I think that's astute. You're right. I do have a problem with authority and. I'm also interested in people who are the thing that they are have a problem with, you know. Yeah. That's that's kind of the logo of our of it is the logo of our new uh, production company Renegade. It's a it's a horse made of fire. And yeah. the one thing that horses are terrified of is fire. So that's our true. logo is this horse that's made of fire and uh that's exactly what uh what this is it's authority figures who have a problem with authority i love that <laughs> I'm, I'm glad i could point that out for you because but like what looking at your career I, it just kind of it really sticks out to me like i'm a massive fan of the expanse as well and, and joe miller was that kind of character too right. Uh, right. yeah and I, I was i was wondering also i mean the expanse has come to an end recently what I, I i would love to get to know what it was like to work on that show and you also did some directing on that show as well. What did I that did. mean to you? Well, I've been um, really interested in directing for about 10 years. I did a, I did the first 3D drama shot on digital cameras uh, in uh, 2009, I think it was, um, called Dark Country. And, and that really, I really got the bug from that. You know, I learned a lot from that. Um, and I'm proud of the movie, but then I, so I started developing stuff, you know, and this producing and directing, I wrote a Western. We're hopefully going to shoot that Western next year. Yeah. Um, I started developing scripts. I started working with writers. I started learning the craft of, you know, sort of the other end of the camera in terms of the creative process of developing and then shepherding a project to fruition. So Trapo is our first uh, television yeah, uh, foray that's made it to the big screen. The other one we've got is Stephen King's From a Buick Eight. We're putting that together right now. Oh wow, are you, are you actually doing that? Oh, that's yeah, so we, cool. Yeah, we we found a partner and we're just uh, do, taking care of the writing uh, aspect oh. of that that journey right now. Um, oh, that's that's what, I love so, that book. That's an yeah, incredible it's, book. It's, it's got some great potential. A lot of really interesting people have tried and failed to to do it as a film yeah. over the years you know some really great talent have have want tried to tackle it but i think this uh medium of uh miniseries is the yeah. way to go for this one it needs eight to ten hours to tell the story yeah. and it's uh the, I, i'm really excited about the potential of that that's true like stephen king stuff i think does work best in that sort of medium anyway um, they can. I mean, it depends yeah. on the book, but yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I mean, you yourself, you're in The Mist, which I think is one of the best adaptations of a Stephen King. Well, that was a novella, a Stephen King novella, but yeah. Um, that that to me is one of the most underrated horror movies I've ever watched. Frank Darabont, like, and you yeah. as the lead, just ha ha hats off to you because that's that's another incredible project you're involved in. 
Good. And uh, a, a personal favorite of mine is is like is is horror something you want to delve into a bit more? Some more Stephen King stuff as well. I love the horror. Horror is so hard to find, you know, yeah. uh, to to good material that's original. Um, I've been looking for quite a long time to for the for a good horror project, you know. Uh, uh, from a Buick Gate has elements of the supernatural, yeah. for sure. But it's 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 much more of a drama about a yes. troop, a troop of Pennsylvania State Troopers, which I love. Um, again, authority, but uh, <laughs> I am interested in in horror. I just you know I've got such a respect for it that I want it to be elevated. I want it to have a shot at being something that's really memorable, like The Mist. Yeah. Yeah. So it's few and far between. I mean, it's it's an interesting area to to play in at the moment, especially. I think there's a lot of good elevated horror uh, coming out. Um, so right. I mean, I've, okay. I've, I've, I mean, there, there is there is some stuff out there. I could say I can send you send you some uh, X, for instance. The new movie X has just come out, which is uh, oh, I, a really, I like Ty. Yeah, Ty West. Yeah, yeah I, I think he's yeah. cool. He, he's a talented dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, well, it's it's really good, but uh, I can't. Right now, it's twenty I, bucks. You want to you want to rent it? And it's twenty bucks. I mean, they got yeah. It. But I guess it's in the theaters. So that's it's good. it's in a couple of theaters. Yeah, not it's it didn't get a massive wide release, but um, oh, okay. I, I can't I can't talk to you. I, I'm I know James would be remiss if I didn't mention The Punisher and a little bit about Dirty Laundry because oh, sure. that that's his. I think that's his favorite like um, Punisher thing ever, and we're including sure. the Punisher series in that. Uh, we wanted to know what that was like to work on and what it was like to work with Adi Shankar on that. Adi and I had met, you know, and we were tossing ideas around. At one point, we were going to do a film together. Yeah. At the same time, this was, uh, I mean, to be honest, this was just something that I cooked up on the couch one day and thought this would make a really neat short story, you know, a little short film. Um I came up with the idea, just the outline, you know, of the story. And I called up a couple of buddies of mine who I thought would be good at it. Chad St. John is an yeah. excellent writer in the style of Walter Hill. He's very terse and but really gets it, really gets the tone. Um, dying to work with that guy. We haven't we haven't been able to make that happen yet, but we did work. So I called him up and I said, hey, here's the outline. He whipped it out in a weekend. He whipped us out a 10 page script over the weekend. And at the time I had just worked with Phil Juanu, who did state of grace uh, among other films, three o'clock high is another good one. Um, and he, I knew could, was capable of, of doing the, the kind the tone that I wanted, you know, I wanted, and the reason I wanted to do it was just to capture the tone that I felt when I, thought about the Punisher and read those books mm. and thought that what the, what the fans really responded to in that, in that world hadn't been expressed on film yet. So I yeah. did short to, uh, to take us to that world, you know, as best I could. And, and this one of those things where it all, it all came together. I had the right people at the right time. And, uh, Chad St. John wrote the script. Phil Juanu brought in his commercial film crew, so we were able to do it on the cheap. Adi Shankar foot, fit the foot, footed the bill, and we we knocked it out, you know. And and we uh, and we knew we couldn't monetize it because it really yeah. was sort of a fan film. So we just threw it out there. And the fun part was, I took it down to San Diego. Uh, I had a booth down there at the time I was making comic books with a company yeah. of mine called Ross Studios and we had a booth. So we rented out a, one of those little rooms and we handed out uh, postcards and we didn't say what it was about, but we hinted at that there was going to be something special. And a few hundred people showed up not knowing what they were going to get. I forget how many people, it must have been maybe 200 because uh, we had a, our room wasn't huge. Um, and we had a big screen and we, and we didn't, we said a couple of words and then we just dropped it on a big screen for these, for this little audience. And they flipped out. It was really, oh, that must have been amazing. <laughs> really gratifying to see 
And uh, those postcards are out there somewhere. I'm sure those those guys who collect everything is, have those uh, those original postcards we yeah. handed out. You know, be at this place at this time and see something special. Uh, that was fun. That was really fun. Would Would you ever like to revisit the character? I would do it as a director. Oh, I would, cool! I would love to. Uh, I would love to make Circle of Blood. Oh. Yeah, Castle ends up in prison with uh, yeah. with everybody that he put there over the years, and they all want to kill him. It's it's a really great little graphic novel. Oh, that would uh, be great. Cool. You know, you t- t- use that as the core and then sort of expand it out a little bit. Yeah. That's a very good idea. You should pitch that to Marvel. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Marvel... No, uh, I guess it all does still go through Marvel, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's that's something that I think a lot of people are asking. There's Doctor Strange out at the moment, the second one, and a lot of people were talking about cameos, and I, I'm pretty sure your name came up at some point as right. a potential cameo. Has, has Have you ever had discussions with Marvel about coming back to play the character or not? No, no. It went on to John Berntal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. who did the uh, series for Netflix. I thought he was excellent, you know. Yeah. I love the character and I love the uh, the world. But, uh, you know, as far as, like, if I was directing The Punisher, I wouldn't cast me, um, you know, and I, and I did the best I could with it and all that. But, you know, he's, he's uh, I believe it, you know, he's, uh, he's Italian, you know. He, he's an Italian fighting the mob. And mm. I think that's sort of an important part of that. You know that you know he, he's 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 olive skinned and black haired and yeah and hairy and you know he's he's a beast from another dimension you know and yeah. uh, than I live in you know we're just different <laughs> animals. Yeah, it's true. No, it's true. It's a very it's a different interpretation of the character to yours. Yeah, which, yeah, which I love. Yeah, um, there's. There is, um, I think I've got a couple more minutes with you, uh, Thomas, if that's okay with you, by the way. Um, There was a a movie that came out a couple of years ago that uh, we're talking of Stephen King. It's 1922, came out on Netflix. And and that, I think, I I think, like, your performance in that was, uh, we're talking about horror as well, is incredible. One one of the the movies that uh, a, a fair amount of people saw but uh, mm. I really, I really do think it needs to be revisited because uh, anyone what? watching this, if you haven't watched 1922, please do. Um, what yeah, was, it was it like cool. to make that movie? We were, we were up in uh, Canada making that movie. Yeah. All the cornfield stuff is all digital, so I was amazed okay. how they were able to, uh, to really make it feel like we were in Nebraska, 1922. They did a great job of that. Yeah, so we were, up, we were up in Canada shooting. Uh, we had. Netflix gave us a little bit of a budget to make the house and, and the, the effects and stuff. Um, we had a, a very good DP. Um, and uh, we had an Australian uh, who wrote the uh, screenplay and also directed it. I thought he did a great job with the screenplay. Yeah. You know, and the movie was number one on Netflix when it came out. Yeah, it was. So people enjoyed it. That was good. That's good. I had a great time with that character. I really loved. Uh, there's a, a a lot of my grandfather in that character. Uh, so I think I I think I lost you for a second there, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I was saying my grandfather the character is a lot of my grandfather in there. Oh, cool. Um, that I mean, honestly, hats off to you for that for for that movie. Like, I'm t- I feel like I'm just like, <laughs> saying the same sort of thing again and again and again. But you have been in uh, a lot of incredible movies uh you have for for me growing up the punisher was like a massive thing to see a movie like that i was probably way too young when i watched it for the first time but, right uh, to, to see Good. a film like that in in a, a comic book movie that was made like that really um it it made a difference i think and um and thank you very much for that and thank you so much for the expanse as well which is uh, a, oh, a massive yeah. A massive hit, incredible, incredible science fiction. Well, based uh, on a really wonderful series of books, you know. And yeah. If you're into science fiction, these guys can really write. They're, it's really good stuff, and that's what attracted me to the to the project, you know. Always look for good source material. 
Yeah, it's it, honestly brilliant, brilliant stuff. Again, if anyone watching this hasn't watched it yet, please do. I think that's also on Amazon at the moment. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Amazon yeah. seems to be my new home now. <laughs> yeah. Well, talking of that, do you reckon, uh, has there been any news on Tropo Season 2 or are you just uh, seeing how this hit, this goes? Well, uh, I can tell you that we dropped it in Australia a couple of months ago and it did gangbusters over there. Awesome. Very, it was very well received. So we're yeah. uh, we're hoping for the same reaction here. But they're already talking about Candace Fox uh, wrote a second book called Redemption Point with Ted and Amanda. Yes. And we're already talking about opening up the writing writer's room <laughs> to do a season two. I think, it, you know, when people want to commit to watching 10 hours of a show, it's nice to know that, that it's not just a one off thing that people yeah. that you're that we're actually going to bring you another chapter of the uh, of this of the show, and and it certainly looks like that's what we're going to do. Oh, that's great news! Thank people, you. People love, people love it. Thank you so much, Thomas, for talking to us today, for taking the time to talk to us. You and bet. Uh, everyone, everyone, everyone will be watching Tropo on this channel definitely when that comes out. I will make sure of that. Good, and let me know what you think, pal. I do. I will do. Cheers. Thank you so much, Thomas. You bet. Hey, have a good one. You too. You too. Right. Cheers.